Indwelling urinary catheters are medical devices utilized by patients in hospital, home, nursing home, and hospice settings to manage bladder issues and relieve urinary retention. The most common urinary catheter in use is the Foley indwelling catheter, which is comprised of a tube inserted through the urethra or a surgically placed port directly into the bladder and held in place by an inflatable balloon. Although these devices were originally designed for short-term use, indwelling catheters are now used for years by some patients. The healthy bladder is typically a sterile environment. Although urinary catheters are initially sterile and typically inserted using aseptic techniques, bacteria can ascend up the lumen of the catheter or along the outside into the bladder. Colonization of catheters and bladders with bacteria is ubiquitous after placement of an indwelling urinary catheter. Sometimes these bacteria are innocuous and do not cause problems. However, when catheters become infected with certain types of bacteria, problems arise. As they mature, bacteria in and on catheters naturally produce an extracellular matrix called biofilm that protects the embedded bacteria from the body's immune system and even from antibiotics. Moreover, colonization by bacteria such as Proteus mirabilis results in release of the enzyme urease into the urine. Urease metabolizes urea in the urine, which produces ammonium, which in turn can cause alkalinization of the urine. Healthy urine is somewhat acidic. However, in alkaline urine, struvite and hydroxyapatite crystals can precipitate and become embedded in the biofilm generated by the bacteria. Consequently, the biofilm in urinary catheters often appears crystallized, which can reduce the flow of urine in the lumen of the catheter. Crystals can also clog the import ports of the catheter and generate the nuclei that lead to formation of bladder stones, which are typically large, rounded crystals of the same material that clog the catheters. When urine can no longer flow, serious medical consequences can result. Urine leakage around the outside of obstructed catheters can partially relieve excessive pressure, but results in incontinence, which has significant negative impacts on patients' self-esteem and social interactions. More medically impactful, crystalline biofilm deposits obstructing either the catheter's lumen or inlets can cause bladder distension, urine reflux into the kidneys, and or promote the formation of large crystals called stones in the bladder. When bladders become distended due to urine accumulation in patients with spinal cord dysfunction, nerves are activated that cause a reflexogenic increase in heart rate and blood pressure. This phenomenon is called autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia is widely recognized to constitute a serious, even life-threatening medical emergency. The rate and severity of formation of crystalline biofilm within indwelling urethral catheters may wax and wane over time, but the problem persists as long as patients utilize indwelling catheters. Hence, loss of catheter patency is a lifelong problem which constitutes a heavy burden for both patients and the healthcare system. Araclosine irrigation solution is an investigational drug product designed to prevent the formation of crystalline biofilm in catheters and maintain catheter patency. To perform the treatment, the catheter is first disconnected from the collection bag. A catheter syringe is loaded with the irrigation solution, which is then injected up through the catheter. A sufficient volume of araclosine irrigation solution is injected to cover the catheter inlets. Araclosine irrigation solution selectively attacks bacteria that are driving the formation of crystalline biofilm. The catheter is removed and the solution is allowed to drain. This procedure is repeated a second time, and then the catheter tip is reconnected to the urine collection bag. During the two sequential irrigations, which constitute a single treatment, araclosine attacks bacteria, not only those free-floating bacteria, but also those encapsulated within the biofilm. By reducing the load of crystalline biofilm-producing bacteria with two treatments per week, catheters may remain patent for much longer durations. Importantly, patients may be able to avoid the unpredicted catheter blockages that can cause very severe medical consequences.